All right, so this is a video finally on the dangers of the uh, dreaded lever safety on the Spaz 12, uh, some myths and facts about it, what you need to know if you have one of these or what you need to know if you're looking to buy one of these um, and you know the dangers that kind of go along with it. Uh, so originally the Spaz 12 was shipped with this lever safety. Uh, some, I think it was for if you had gloves on your hands, you could flip it back and forth real easy and that was kind of the whole purpose of the design. Uh, they ended up discovering that it had kind of a uh, engineering fault and it would cause the gun to fire if you took it off of safe. Uh, so I've never seen any footage of that and uh, luckily we've got one of our contributors uh, down in Florida who was nice enough to send us this faulty lever safety so we could get some footage of it. So I took it outside and uh, here's what we came up with. So yeah, pretty scary stuff. Uh, you could be out shooting by yourself sometime and then you'd end up uh, uh, shooting yourself and that's, that's chaos. So what ended up happening with these safeties is after they found out that they were defective, the company that imported these had already gone bankrupt, FIE. So a company called American Arms took out these big ads and uh, this is Guns and Ammo from August 1991 and it was in uh, a few other months as well. I don't know if that signifies when it started and ended. But uh, yeah, so American Arms did a recall on these where they would swap it out with this more traditional looking kind of button safety, cross bolt safety. And it was just a direct drop in, swap out the trigger groups, and uh, these were a lot safer. Uh, American Arms went bankrupt in the year, around the year 2000 or so, um, and then the rumor around the internet is that they became TriStar Arms. Uh, I called TriStar Arms and they, they maintain that that's not the case and they don't want any calls from Spaz 12 owners saying, hey, please fix my gun. So don't bother those guys, please. They were very nice. Uh, yeah, so the lever safety, um, I'll see if I can get it to, to do it here. So, you know, if you guys at home have these, you can maybe test it. Um, one thing to drive home is that just, if, just because yours doesn't uh, cause it to fire doesn't mean that it's not going to. Uh, they all will eventually wear themselves to a point to where they will have this defect. So be extremely careful. Um, usually it, there it goes. I don't know if you can see like the, the auto safety lever kicked over in here and you can't, you probably can't see into the uh, ejection port there, but yeah, the hammer is dropped and this gun just fired. So uh, about 15 to 20% of the time is the failure rate on this one. Um, so what can you do if you have one of these? Uh, there's a few options. The, the main thing, obviously, is be safe. If you take part in the greatest part of Spaz 12 ownership, which is letting other people shoot it, it's your responsibility to let people know, hey, don't mess with this lever, don't touch it, pretend it's not there, because uh, it can cause the gun to fire. Uh, that's, you know, their, their safety is in your hands and, you know, that's why I'm kind of trying to inform as many people as I can that there's this defect here. Because a lot of people are buying these and, uh, you know, they go, hey, Jurassic Park, and you'll end up, you know, blowing your toes off. Bad stuff. So, uh, first thing, be safe. Second thing, you can use the auto safety lever over here to deactivate your trigger. And I'll show you that. I'll just write that home so it's quiet. Um, if I were to pull the trigger right now, the hammer would drop but with this little auto safety lever, you can deactivate your trigger that way. So if you're at a range where they mandate that you have to have your gun open and on safe, you can use this auto safety lever. It's very easy to bump off, so keep that in mind if you're going to try and use this as your main safety. Uh, the other thing you can do is buy another Spaz 12 that already has the cross bolt safety installed and you can swap it out yourself, not the safety. Swap out the entire trigger group to be safe. Um, and, and you'll be good to go there. That's obviously very expensive, and some people could sell these trigger groups. They've been on Gun Broker lately for between four and six hundred dollars, depending on who's buying that day. So that's a pretty pretty pricey fix. Uh, the third thing you can do is something that I've been tinkering with a little bit, and you can actually remove the lever entirely. Um, that just, I guess, is more for mental uh, ease. 
because if you, it's not there, you're not going to want to play with it. If it's not there, nobody's going to be able to mess with it. If you know you hand your gun off to somebody, they pass it around to two or three other people, and somebody starts messing with the lever, and they you know cause some damage. Uh, as far as I can tell, removing the lever it was very it's very easy to do. That'll be a separate video, and then I'll also in that separate video kind of show a little bit as to what causes it to fire with the safety. Um, basically, it's just it's extremely rough on the trigger group and the hammer when you're using this safety. It's a pretty pretty crude design. Um, but yeah, so if you're looking to buy a Spaz 12 and it has a lever safety, be careful. If you have a Spaz 12 and it has a lever safety, be very careful. Uh, I don't want anybody to get hurt. Um, and I'll try and keep the website updated with as much information as I can get in on the lever safety and what your options are and, and that type of thing. So yeah, be safe. Um, check out the SPAS 12 project, www.spaz-12.com. I'll leave a link in the comments or in the description. Thanks.